Hello and welcome to the Mr. MCD 2024. Today, the Pfeiffer show us a talk about knots and how to tie them. Welcome. <laughs> okay. okay. Ah. Hello and welcome. Ah. You're all sailors and firefighters, rock climbers, boy scouts and girl scouts and deep sea divers. And you all know a lot more about knots than I do, but let me tell you a little bit about knots that I use every day. We start with the simple overhand knot. Um, we've all tied this one, but how does a knot actually work? So, uh, it comes down to friction and tension. Friction, because the rope rubs against itself, and tension, because the rope twists and curls and uh, maybe bites down on itself. Um, but that might actually reduce rope strength. There are some knots that are better and don't reduce rope strength as much, but the humble overhand knot will reduce the strength of a rope by about 40 to 60 percent. So um, we all know how it's tied. What is it used for? Well, mostly um, to prevent a rope from fraying. So you tie it in the end of a rope, but I also use it uh, to keep my USB cords from tangling. A step up, <laughs> the double overhand knot. There's simply one more turn and you get the double overhand knot, but there's, a, there's another way uh, to tie it because you have to dress it up the knot. So uh, if you, you got this, you have to pull this a little and everything and then you get the double overhand knot. Or you just start with two turns right away in this X, in this cross formation. End goes right through and you have your double overhand knot. That's how it's tied. What is it used for? Well, same as before, as a stopper knot. And um, I use it, for example, um, to prevent the ends of this uh, rope from uh, fraying and uh, so it doesn't slip in. That's the double overhand knot. The reef knot. You all know the reef knot, of course. As before, very simple to tie. It's just an overhand knot and another overhand knot. But it is important that one is left over right and the other right over left or the other way around. If you tie them both in the same direction, your knot will be a lot less um, secure. So that's the reef knot and how to tie it. Where is it used? Well, for decorative ribbons, if you um, uh, tie a ribbon on, a, on a, a Christmas present or something. But we all use it uh, to tie our shoes. Now. I want you to check your shoes. If they look uh, nice, like this one on the right, then you've done it right. If it's wonky and in the wrong direction, then your whole life was a lie and you uh, have to relearn how to tie your shoes. Um, okay, I have a little bonus knot for you. Maybe you always wanted to know what this extra hole is for in your running shoes. Well, you just loop the lace through one more time and then the lace goes through those loops and then you can really cinch it tight. It prevents your heel from slipping, but don't um, make it too tight. I mean, you have to run after all. <laughs> so that's the reef knot. The sheet bend. Well, generally, knots that tie two ropes together are called bends. 
And the sheet bend is probably the simplest of them all. You start with a byte and uh, you just loop the other end through. And here you go, the sheet bend. Make sure that both the short ends are on the same side. If they're on opposite sides, your knot is probably less secure. So this is how you tie it, step by step. What is it used for? You can use it for tying into all kinds of sheets, of course, like a tarp or a sail. Um, I use it um, to attach threads when I want to change color in the embroidering machine. That's why it's also called uh, the weaver's knot. The fisherman's knot, a very sturdy and re uh, reliable knot to um, connect two ropes together. It's really simple to tie, it's just an overhand knot, but the other rope goes, goes through. You can uh, improve this one. I mean, you just learned about the double overhand knot. So with two double overhand knots, you get the double fisherman's knot. What is it used for? Um, well, securely tie two ropes together, or in this case, um, you can use it to uh, tie an amulet around your neck because you can adjust it in length. That's the fisherman's knot. The zeppelin bend, a really good knot. It's very sturdy and secure. It can hold really, really heavy loads, but you can still untie it even after it's been loaded with a tremendous force. How to tie it? Well, remember 69. So you twist one loop into a six, and one into a nine. Six goes on top of nine. The tail end of the six goes through from behind and the tail end of the nine goes through from the front. And like this, you got the zeppelin bend. Very, very secure knot. What it, is it used for? Well, to connect two ropes together. And um, yeah, it can always be untied. Legend has it that it was used to tie down airships, but that is probably untrue. That's the zeppelin bend. Okay, the next category are hitches. Whenever you attach a rope to something else, it's usually called a hitch. But naming in knots is not so strict. So sometimes knots have different names depending on who ties them or how they tie them. Some have the wrong names, some have multiple names. But we start with the simple and reliable glove hitch. How is it tied? Well, you wrap around the pole or whatever two times and then you just slip one end underneath. You can also uh, just start with the two loops and put them over um, the post you're tying it to. What is it used for? Well, mooring your boat, of course. But also, let me tell you a little story. Imagine a tower in the middle of the forest. The tower is about 27.4 meters high, and you're not allowed to climb the tower, but rappelling down is so much fun. So I hiked there in the middle of the night, of course, and I wanted to rappel down. So I ran up the stairs, attached the rope at the top. My rope is 50 meters long, so I couldn't use it in a double configuration. I had to use a single rope, so I attached it with a trusty glove hitch knot to a steel hand railing. And when rappelling, there's this one moment when you go over the edge, when you go from a vertical position to a horizontal body position. And it was in this moment that I noticed my knot 
sliding a little bit. And what can I say? Asshole goes <laughs> Anyway, if you load the knot slowly, it might slip a little, but if you load it hard, it will hold. It is a very secure knot. That's the clove hitch. Similar but very different, the constrictor knot. Use this knot if you're ready to uh, use a knife to uh, untie <laughs> your rope. Because if it's done properly, uh, it's really, really hard to untie. So you probably have to cut the knot. Um, as the cloth hitch, you just uh, wrap it around the pole you're tying it to, but you slip it underneath one of the loops one more time. And there's uh, another method. You can start with some kind of figure eight configuration where two ends are kind of, no, this goes like this. The two ends, are, uh, the, the two middles are parallel. That's it. And then you just close it like a book on quantum thermodynamics. And that is the constrictor hitch. What is it used for? Uh, in gardening, for example, if you want to tie tomatoes to a pole, or uh, if you want to close a bag of flour. That's why it's also called the Miller's Knot. And you can always tie it um, with the end as a loop, so it slips open and you don't have to cut the knot. That's the constrictor knot. Now the cow hitch. Very simple knot, usually tied in anything that is somehow ring-shaped or uh, mainly used with closed loops. Really easy, just pull the ends of the rope through the loop. This knot is probably the most important knot to learn if you love to tie up other people. And uh, also uh, in climbing when you attach something like a closed loop, really important knot, the cow hitch. The only thing it was never used for probably is tethering a cow. I know it by the name Lark's Head. Little bonus knot, the woodland zip tie. It's based on the cow hitch. You start with the, with the cow hitch and you just put the ends of the rope through that opening. And then you close this cow hitch a little bit and you can really cinch it tight. That's how it's tied. What is it used for? Well, you can tie up a bedroll, but also if you have two um, crossing beams that you want to attach, this is the ideal knot for that. The woodland zip tie. <laughs> okay, the taut line hitch. Really simple knot but it is um, very useful because the loop holds under tension, but it can still be adjusted in length. So you form a bite and then you wrap it around two times or maybe three times, it doesn't matter. And then you just close it off with one more half hitch. That's how you tie the taut line hitch. What is it used for? To uh, tension ropes when uh, erecting a tent, or in this case, a mosquito net. That's the taut line hitch. 
Now for something more spicy, the handcuff knot. What's it used for? To uh, tie down livestock. You can even um, construct it into a uh, makeshift harness to escape from a burning building or whatever. And of course, if you're in a hurry, uh, to tie other people. How do you do it? It's really simple. Just form two loops and you basically pull them through each other, like that. Now you have two loops that close. So someone is going to stick their hands through or whatever you want to tie. Then you pull it tight and to lock it off, just put one more overhand knot on top and the thing is secure. That's how you tie the handcuff knot. I already talked about the uses. Alpine butterfly loop, the queen of knots. <laughs> Looks complicated, but it's really easy. So you can tie a fixed rope in the middle a fixed loop in the middle of a rope. When tying it, it almost looks like a butterfly, right? But there's a really simple way to tie it, actually. Wrap it around your hand three times, like this. Third one goes in the middle, and then the third one goes underneath both of them, and you pull this out, and that's the alpine butterfly loop. Very secure knot. What is it used for? Well, for example, if you have a defect in your rope, you can isolate that defect and still use the rope. Or you can uh, attach something to the middle of the rope if you don't want to hoist all your 50 meters of rope. That's the alpine butterfly loop. And finally, the bowline, the king of knots. <laughs> what is it used for? No, let's start with how do you tie it? It's a fixed loop. How do you tie it? Well, follow the white rabbit. <laughs> you start with uh, a hole and then you follow the rule of the rabbit. Rabbit comes out of the hole, runs around the tree and back into the hole. And that's how you tie the bowline knot. So, what is it used for? Well, rescuing people, of course. And uh, anything else you can imagine that needs a fixed loop. Uh, it fell out of use for mountaineering due to, to, due to some uh, tragic accidents in the 1970s. Um, but I could not reconstruct uh, the, the scenario, how, however this happened. So to me, I th still think it's a very secure knot. Still, it can be improved a little bit. I mean, you could use two loops instead of one um, to thread through. Um, you can even tie this knot one-handed when you're holding on with your other hand to a keg of rum or your dear life or whatever. And uh, that's the bowline knot. And yeah, so basically I'm done with my presentation. I might have one more bonus knot, but any questions so far? Okay, well then, one more bonus knot. <laughs> this one is called the double Windsor. Really important knot and you should learn it. Go around one end 
and the other. The single Windsor is kind of lopsided and not as symmetric. Oops. Go around the front and through the hole you just created. And then you just tighten the knot. Like that. That's it, we're done. Thank you.